Like all my runs for the last few months, my feet are wet, my toes are numb, the dog is muddy. But not yesterday, because yesterday I was at Spartan Stadium, which is almost an indoor event. First stadium event run by Spartan in the UK, and the first one filmed with a GoPro Max. 13k, halfway around. When I get home from this, I will uh, take you through it. But first, a few good things about the stadium event and a few bad things. The GoPro, actually, it was a mistake. I was going to put it on my head, but my head said stick it on your chest. My gut said stick it on your head. My chest didn't get a say. It was a disaster. Bounced around more on my chest than it would have done on my head. Got in the way more, climbing over walls. Stupid. Never again. Always on my head. The low light capability of the GoPro Max wasn't ideal. The shutter speed was running really slow to cope with the light. Too much blur. Nothing I could do about that. Back in a second, I think I'm lost. I was lost. Not anymore. Okay. So the GoPro wasn't ideal. Also, playing it back, I've had a little go of the footage already online. And uh, where the GoPro is good, it's facing in the same direction and then using post-production to look around. I will demonstrate. Like that. But when you physically turn around, this happens. So to correct that in post-production, you need to adjust for the direction you want it to face like this get the idea and in the Spartan Stadium there were so many twists and turns going up and down the stairs that it involved lots and lots of post-production editing bit of a chore bad things about the event they could have done more for spectators it was a pity everything's so contained you'd think they'd have some sort of map where spectators could work out where to get for various obstacles to see more of it they didn't really have that spectators could see plenty but they could have done more man it is muddy out okay map check lost again hang on to relieve the boredom of my long weekend runs i've started downloading these gpx tracks off the internet from random walkers and runners so i'm never quite sure where i'm going anyway back to it what else was bad? Nothing. Nothing. It was good. I'm no rugby fan, but walking out of the stadium entrance onto the field, the pitch, what do you call that? The grass, I don't know. Um, that was pretty cool. It's a big old place. I like the short distance, and I didn't. I'm a short distance person. It took me just over half an hour, but there was still a part of me thinking, for value of money, nothing else. Could have made it a bit longer. Um, what else was good? Do you know what? Just watch the thing. Let's go, boy. Okay, let me talk you through the race. So, pretty cool place to start, walking out into the stadium. Very exciting. I did a little twirl here. Good example of what the GoPro in post-production can do, spinning around. But if you don't do it in post-production and you just turn around, what happens next is what you're left with, which is effectively me walking into my own shot. So there I am. Hello, my chest. Rather inconvenient, but GoPro oddities aside, let's get running. This is a Spartan sprint distance. So they said it was 6K. Probably closer to four and a half, maybe 5k. Nobody I spoke to said it felt anything like 6k. 
22 obstacles dotted about all over the stadium, taking us straight away indoors and the GoPro not liking the low lighting, blurry as hell, useless. Uh, hurdles, some of these obstacles you'll recognize if you've done any other Spartan distances. Uh, some of them are specific to the sprint though, or the stadium rather. They use the building well actually, they took us all over it. Uh, a lot of stair use, a lot of running through the aisles, the stands. People worried in advance about the amount of elevation that would cause, but to be honest, if you would rather run up a hill outside than a, a stair indoors with a railing that you can haul yourself up and down, uh, you're nuts. This was far easier than climbing regular hills. So as I say, obstacles that you'll recognise, the hurdles, and then obstacles that are new. The first one of those is the slam ball. Pick up a medicine ball, stick it above your head, slam it on the floor. Repeat 15 times. Pretty straightforward. Uh, so straightforward that I'll speed this up because watching me do it is probably more boring than it was to actually do it 15 times. And we are done and off. A lot of it undercover because we're up in the stands, which was good because it was raining and that made the concrete really slippy and horrible. Moving here on to the second of the stadium specific obstacles, box jumps, uh, all very crossfit. Step up onto the box and down 15 times. Very simple, although having said that, I think I might, yeah, there I go, almost fall off. I'm going to blame my shoes there. Actually, the shoes I'm wearing there are Ultra Escalante Racers, which are almost a racing flat. Really, really good shoe. Lightweight and fast, but not designed for obstacle courses. So um, there was a couple of times when it was a less than ideal option. Somewhere I don't need a shoe, multi-rig. Uh, the multi-rig and the monkey bars I took way too long on. Really messed them up. I uh, didn't fail them, in fact I got through the whole course clean, but just took an absolute age to get going. Now my excuse for this is that I have taken up indoor climbing in the last couple of weeks, and ironically I did so to improve my grip strength. The problem is that I've taken it up with such enthusiasm and vigour that I've managed to pull a muscle in my back, so although I was in no danger of actually falling off of this thing, I was in a lot of pain and it, uh, it delayed things somewhat, rather frustratingly. So off of the multi-rig and onto the monkey bars and just more of the same. Uh, here I get the added joy of watching uh, that guy on the right go across there literally like a monkey. And then people on the left uh, just disappearing off into the distance basically while I make an absolute pig ear of this thing. Uh, in fact, you just have to trust me, it takes too long to get to the bell. I did get there in the end. Okay, after that we have the sandbag carry. I like the carries, uh, being bigger, carrying something that is uh, not particularly heavy for me is good. Gives me a chance to get past some people that might find it a slightly more challenging task. Having said that, the carries were pretty short. Uh, it's a sprint event, so that's to be expected, but we weren't carrying these things very far at all. Actually, while I can see the photographer there as well, let me just talk about Spartan photographers. What are these guys doing? Uh, Spartan photos are already up online and they have chosen to take photographs, as they often do, of the carry and the finish line. I have no idea why. The carry is about as exciting as watching me unload my car and lug the shopping indoors. Uh, the finish line is just jogging. I could go into a 10k, a half marathon and get a photograph of me jogging. They have so many opportunities to get cool photographs of people swinging in the air or climbing up ropes and stuff, and they don't. They photograph this nonsense. Uh, in fact, they didn't even get a photograph of me doing the carry, so um, I have a photograph of me running across the finish line. That's it. Useless. There you go. Gripe over. Uh, back indoors. And this was actually quite fun. It's just a, a new environment to be running. It feels like I'm, well, I am running around a shopping centre almost, it was just, um, yeah, just a nice change. And again, banister, you can haul yourself up. People moaning about the elevation on this course. Uh, this is a million times better than, than a hill, unless you can find me a hill that's got a, a stair rail beside it. 
Now, top of this obstacle, uh, top of this stairway, is another stadium-specific obstacle, the skipping rope. And as I approach, I'm a little bit worried because I'm looking at the two guys at the front there smacking themselves in the head with a rope. I'm looking at other people making a, a real song and dance of it, taking a long time to do each individual skip. And I was thinking, well, what's going on? Is the rope really heavy? Is it is it an odd length that makes it hard to skip with? Uh, they made us wear a band on our legs as though they didn't trust us to skip properly. I was thinking, what the heck is going on here? And, uh, and actually, I have no idea because I just did my 15 skips and got out of there. Perhaps everybody else needs to get themselves a skipping rope for Christmas or something. Not sure what they're up to. It was a very simple, very easy task. About as easy as skipping is probably the best way to describe it. Okay, so more running through the stands. My, uh, my wave, the 45 plus age group, pretty small wave, so there weren't too many people in the way. We're catching up here with the people in the earlier wave group, but it was a fairly quiet course when I was out, which was nice. Talking of nice, my favorite obstacle, uh, the empty stairway. Leaned halfway down, grabbed the banisters and jumped to the next flight of stairs. I learned this technique in the Butts Shopping Center in Reading in about 1983. I thought, I know, I'll retain that knowledge and I'll use it when I'm 46 in Twickenham. It was a very, very quick way of getting down the stairs until this chap got in the way. Favourite obstacle, legging it down the stairs, a lot of fun. And then on to the second of the carries, the Jerry Can carry. Again, don't mind the carries, no problem at all. And again, it was a pretty, pretty short distance. You can see we're going out in the rain, which made it a bit depressing. But that aside, a relatively easy obstacle. After that, we had a few more runs around the stadium, and then we had what would normally be the barbed wire crawl if it were a regular Spartan event. Uh, I guess there's some health and safety about having barbed wire hanging across the stairways in a sports stadium, so we just get bits of string instead hands and knees under the string and in fact more of an inconvenience than an obstacle not a big deal at all and then the spear throw the only obstacle that i was a little bit worried about failing uh, as soon as i saw it though i realized that it was not going to be a big deal the bale of hay that you throw the spear into was really close much closer than a regular spear throw it certainly seemed to be anyway. I can't believe it's more than about two, maybe two and a half spear lengths away. So um, I nailed that one. My fourth, maybe fifth spear throw in a row now that I've hit. So getting the hang of that. Something I'm not getting the hang of is the Z wall in the rain. Um, to be fair, this is the first Z wall in the rain I've encountered, and it was horrible. Combination of those foot blocks being wet and slippy, and me wearing my uh, funky new shoes which are fast and quick but uh, not designed for standing on little blocks of wet wood. Also got a, another viewing angle here this is because this is the point where the spectators can see us so Jenna here filming me. As I mentioned earlier the, the spectators got a bit of a raw deal here they didn't get to see an awful lot uh, a few obstacles and then the finish line if they were quick Took a long time on the Z wall, got there in the end. Rope climb is a much quicker obstacle for me. I enjoy the rope, no problems there. Ring the bell and on to the A frame. Uh, a frame, again, straightforward. Only problem here was that we are getting towards the end of the race now, and a few people from the earlier waves were slowing up, getting a bit tired, and unfortunately choosing to get tired at the top of the A-frame in the way, so a bit of queuing to contend with. And then once off the A-frame, onto the six foot wall, hop over that. And then my absolute favorite, I've just realized even more of a favorite than bouncing down the staircase one flight at a time, is the hoist. The only obstacle in the entire Spartan itinerary of obstacles 
where just being big and heavy and strong is a real advantage. Hoist the weight up to the top, put it down again, and split onto the next obstacle. Love it. Next up is over, under, through. There's the over, the under is coming up. Actually quite a cool GoPro effect here because I roll around the camera. It's as I sort of filmed myself. Not raining on the lens would have been even better, but uh, I can't control the weather. Through the out and then into the car park spiral stairway thing, uh, which we had to run up obviously. And at this point, I know that we are getting towards the end of the course, so I am absolutely determined to move as fast as I possibly can and going up a pretty steep incline at the same time. So uh, a bit of a kind of battle between my head and my legs at this stage. This felt like it was going on forever. Good example here of what happens with GoPro footage when you don't constantly adjust for the fact that you're changing direction and the camera isn't. You get this weird sort of um, camera spinning in circles effect. Obviously the camera isn't, it's constantly facing uh, whatever, north, south. It's facing in the one direction and you're not. Let's jump to the top of this because this goes on forever. Off of the car ramp and into the last section of the stadium. And here I've got a nice clear run. And at this point I am pushing as hard as I possibly can. In fact, I'm a little bit worried about tripping over those steps in the way and uh, tumbling to my death over the side of the balcony. I can see the finish line down there on the right. And I know that all I need to do is sprint right the way around the stadium to the other end and go down the car park stairway at that end. Uh, let's keep calling it a car park stairway. What is it? It's a ramp, isn't it? Let's go with that get to the car park ramp at the other end and go down. And here we go into the last downhill section to get back to the ground floor where the finish is. This is deceptive actually because it doesn't look that steep, but, uh, but it was. If you're in a car, you'd be rolling down this. You wouldn't need to use any gas. I'm trying to go as fast as I can and still make the turn, overtake people, uh, contend with the downhill. My legs are worn out, hard work, mind over matter here. Again, this goes on and on. So let's jump to the ground floor and downstairs, last obstacle indoors over the seven foot wall. I can see in the distance, the finish line, pouring with rain, get outside. I know there's a right turn to the gauntlet, which is a series of hanging punch bags for goodness knows what reason. Uh, they clearly don't slow you down at all. The inverted wall, and that is it, finish line in sight. With these races, my objective is always to try and be in the top half, and I achieve that inside the top 50%. In fact, inside the top 50% for all age groups, not just the old men version that I run in. And that's it, got my medal, and we are done.